Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and after a wonderful week making new designs for future videos, I figured we should get straight back into everyone's favourite, trains! No, not that one. How about that one? Oh yeah! But first, some of your amendments. <laughs> So the majority of the recent amendments were suggested for the pizza area, City Pizza, uh, and most of them centre around the scene with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle popping out of the sewer to collect his pizza order. Uh, and I wanted him in the hole again, but basically it wasn't working, uh, and I didn't have any bright green plates, so I decided to swap the bright green uh, Michelangelo, who's now back in the lair, uh, for Raphael who's dark green and can just be mounted to that uh, gap with two 1x2 plates and that looks much better if you ask me. So that is good encouragement from you. Uh, you also suggested I should use an action piece to have this stack of pizzas flying through the air and I really think that makes the scene a lot more dynamic. Uh, you also needed more pizzas because I only had two which is a bit foolish given there are four uh, turtles and they'll definitely want one each. Uh, the lady over here had to have a bit of a grim face on looking at that disgusting creature coming out of the sewer. Ugh, just the smell. Imagine it. <laughs> uh, we also wanted a vent on the ceiling of the, uh, or roof rather, of the pizza restaurant for the pizza oven. Uh, and I found the old pepperoni, uh, who's this character here, who's the sort of older equivalent of this character here, enjoying a stack of pizzas. So I thought I'd add him to the scene as well. So lots of good ideas there. Uh, improving our wonderful pizza restaurant scene. Thanks for those. Uh, and then more recently with the horse and carriage that I added over here, uh, we suggested a carrot on a fishing rod, which arguably isn't long enough to get in front of the horse's nose, but it gives a good impression. At the moment it's in stop position, <laughs> so we must be getting on and off. Uh, also, it was suggested that it was a good idea having the street cleaner behind this thing, uh, but why not add some evidence of why it was a good idea? So we've got some uh, plop there on the floor left behind by the horse. And is it too much to have a smear coming out of the other end? <laughs> it's pretty grim, isn't it? But I think that might actually happen. Uh, so that's a temporary uh, addition at the moment. You have to tell me if you like that. It's kind of a bit dark, but I, I kind of like it. So uh, yeah, brilliant, uh, all of those as well. I'm going to increase the tower, uh, but I need some more pieces for that because, uh, well, I don't have them lying around. Uh, and one more over here was just to add a wrench to the hand of Joe the plumber on his way down to fix the gents' toilets down here. What a mess. So if one of those was yours, then this is your Bedoying. Well done. Ooh, and I added a Sharkinator advert for a movie. Very nice. Also, a little bit of progress in the fairground. I've retried this sort of whirlwind piece in the icy colours as part of my Escape from the Ice Queen ride. And, I don't know, I didn't like it the first time, and now I do. So I've mounted that on, so that was a uh, idea provided by you. So if I just turn on this section of all the motors, you can see she stays still while they're all going around. Uh, it kind of blocks our view a little bit of the rocket ride, but I think I quite like it. So anyway, that is that. Uh, and I've also put in our rodeo bull ride. And you see now it's in, it's incredibly low profile. Like how on earth does it work? You can see slightly into those grooves, which I was worried about trying to make everything dark in there, but uh, it's the gears that are the most visible thing, and they're grey. You can get black ones, but they're ridiculously expensive. So anyway, that is powered by this section, and there he is, going round and round. I just love the rocking motion of that. So that's on the same motor as the ducky ride, the shooting gallery, and of course this huge carousel. So yeah, there's probably room for one more motor on that uh, setup, which will power something in here. So yeah, very good indeed. So, uh, yeah, if you were the one who suggested that, here is your bedoying. <coughs> lovely. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Oh, yes, this is a wonderful addition to the city. Uh, well, anyone who's been watching my channel for any amount of time will know that I'm obsessed by Lego trains, as many people are, and specifically the cargo trains with many, many unique 
carriages uh, in order to get the longest cargo train in the world. At the moment it's split into two halves just to make it more manageable on the inner and outer ring of my track but it is the intention one day to get a longer track join it all together and have a complete loop of this thing going around insanely long. Uh, so to do that, I need lots and lots of power. Uh, and at the moment, I've got four locomotives. And between them, they've got six motors. But I need to up that, I think. Uh, so at the moment, I've got the red train, which is the 60098 heavy haul train, which I call the Beast. Uh, the yellow 7939 cargo train from 2010, which I call the Hornet. Uh, the blue 60052 uh, cargo train, which I call the Hammerhead. And those three are, well, three of the four uh, power functions uh, trains. I also converted from the old sort of RC uh, era, uh, the 2006 green train 7898, the cargo train deluxe, which I call the Hulk as well. So that's four trains with six motors, uh, but I figured I'd get one more being this, the red 3677. Uh, now, this is also a power functions uh, train, and some people have already sort of suggested that I should get this or asked why I haven't already, because, well, it's right in my wheelhouse, uh, because I love power functions trains much better than the Bluetooth and so on, because you can fit in the rechargeable batteries. And when you're pulling something as heavy as my cargo train, well, it just chews through batteries in no time at all. And when they're low, they don't give enough power and all the rest of it. But Lego's rechargeable batteries, the uh, 8878, are absolutely amazing. I mean, I just can't understand why Lego haven't released one for Powered Up, uh, which might make me actually make the leap that I've <laughs> far too invested in a way now in power functions. But uh, yeah, it's a fantastic system, which probably isn't available to many now unless you already bought the stuff like I have uh, but you know anyway this is one to add to our stable clearly but the reason why I haven't bought this in the past uh, despite the fact that it's very lovely got beautiful stickers on the front and side and even the top on there and so on is because well of the location of the battery box I mean you may notice this is a very long and very sort of thin looking train uh, and you can sort of imagine that there aren't many places to hide a great big battery box. In fact, well, it's hiding in plain sight because it's there. This is it. You can just see it starting there and ending just at this bar piece here. So that actually is the battery box with the switch on and the connection for the power functions motor. And you just think, wow, no wonder it's hard to see because it's different from all the others. It's colored red. Uh, and that's why I didn't buy it because this red battery box side was only ever released via the standard normal uh, battery taking battery box which well it isn't really going to be very useful around my system if I'm going to have to just change the batteries on this every two minutes so yeah I thought is there something I can do about that and I was kind of looking at a regular battery box like this one and then looking at a rechargeable battery box like this one and sort of figuring hmm they seem to have the sort of same profile and the same sides and so on I wonder if I can take this one out uh, and replace the innards with a rechargeable one. Huh, sounds interesting. Uh, there's only one way to really find out whether that's possible, I suppose, and that's to dig this thing out of here and, well, open it up and have a look. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the regular battery box, uh, which has two screws on the underside that you are supposed to open regularly, just so you can separate the top from the bottom to fill the compartment with six AAA batteries. Uh, and that's why it doesn't hold too much charge, just because, well, they're AAAs. So anyway, so far so easy with a normal screwdriver. Uh, but this one doesn't have the two screw holes there. In fact, it has four on the corners, and they're not the same at all. Uh, bunged up as they are with these sort of plastic, uh, well, protection, I suppose. And I've managed to drill out two of them quite easily. You see that small hole in the top there with a very fine drill bit. In fact, it looks like that when it kind of latches onto it to pull it out. And that did work well on two of the four corners. Uh, but the other two, I had to drill again and again and again, kind of making a complete mess until very little of the bung remained. You can see that sort of remnants of plastic and only then would it finally fall out. So that might be me not doing a good job. Uh, but either way, I guess this process isn't reversible uh, very easily. Uh, and I just drilled and drilled and drilled with a pin vise like this handheld. Uh, so anyway, now I have got access to the four 
corner screws and they are just the same we'll just take a regular screwdriver to uh, get into them you do need quite a long one because they are quite deep inside but then you are revealed da, da, da. Ooh, let's hold it the right way up there we go the gubbins now i'm not going to go into this too much but essentially we've got the two cells on the bottom and then we've got all of the mechanics for the sort of variable voltage control on the top and so on a couple of sort of pads on the bottom and well a kind of cradle to hold it all so so far so good uh, there are two empty uh, battery boxes so the real question is just will this fit in here and i did it on a gray one just in case there was some sort of issue before messing with the expensive red one uh, but you can see that da, 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 it fits in fine now it does need to sort of be pushed down uh, which i can either do with bricks or just remove these sort of sticky foam pads because it just so happens they align with the raised areas of those sort of uh, uh, screw holes now, either way, I'm not going to put the screws back in because, well, I don't want to drill into this fuel cell because uh, it totally won't work if I do that. I'm sure it'll leak and be really nasty. So I think if I just remove those two, I'll be able to squidge this down and it will sit in there quite nicely. And just because of the nature of the build of the train, it's kind of pinned in from the top uh, by these sort of long plates. So I think it'll be absolutely fine in situ and then it can still be charged uh, very easily. Uh, by just adding the wire into that top surface there so we have success part of our project to convert this into power functions rechargeable is clearly past the feasibility study so i think now we just need to get into the actual build uh, now i do want to do more than just switch this into a red battery casing i do want to improve on the locomotive as well uh, if you don't know that is actually the a four wide way of concealing a um, uh, IR receiver. It's got a nice control sticker on, but it's pretty ugly, but they do the best at concealing it with these sort of doors. And I think that's fair enough. But one thing I don't like is the fact that we've got this gray stripe being sort of thick here, then thin here when it gets horizontal, then thick, then thin all along here, then thick again, thin, thick, thin, thick. <laughs> so I thought if I made all of the uh, horizontal bits two plates thick, much like the bit that is the uh, canopy over the removable section for the cockpit, then that would be awesome. So that is what I'm going to do. So that will raise it all up a little bit bigger and help me conceal, which I think is the worst part of the whole build. This very, very visible power switch and uh, connector to the motor with this power functions uh, wire and you can even see the wire so i want to close this gap in uh, the fact that this will be one stud higher around the sides means i should be able to put something on the top of at least those two studs maybe not that round one there and i should be able to do a concealed button uh, like you get on most of the modern trains where you kind of press some bricks that are kind of uh, not very uh, heavily connected and they'll push the button for me uh, also, <laughs> as if that job wasn't hard enough already, I want to power these two lights at the front and these two lights at the back with red bulbs. Uh, and essentially at the moment, they're, they're sort of backed off with solid bricks. In fact, they're solid one by one uh, modified bricks at the moment. So I'm going to change them to headlight bricks so I can get in the back, put some panels behind it, stuff like that. So then it's all singing or dancing. So then I'll press my rechargeable button. I'll have four hardwired lights on, even when it's not moving. And then I can use my uh, power functions remote control to power the motor that is there. And I've got the dummy motor bogey here as well. But I am then going to add a second motor to this thing. Now, there are several ways of adding a second motor for even more power. Uh, and one, because they all go in the same direction from the factory, is to have, if this one's there with the wire coming out of this middle section, is to have the wire coming out the back and going back in the front. Uh, so that could look quite ugly with a wire sort of popping out of here, just so when they give the same voltage, they go in the same direction. Well, I've been really busy. <laughs> And I've changed the polarity of this motor. So basically, I can use it this way. And when it gets the same power uh, from the rechargeable battery box, it'll go in the opposite direction, which is basically the same direction when you've got the wires in the middle. Uh, and I did that 
with uh, a soldering iron, essentially. Uh, you'll see I've added a mark onto it with my knife, just a very gentle sort of X marks the spot there, uh, just to tell me which motors have got the polarity reversed. Uh, and I did that by taking apart the power function motor. Now this has got six screws, one, two, three, four, five, six, and these are not regular screws for a regular screwdriver. So I invested four pounds on Amazon to buy this which is a T6 screwdriver, which has got a very interesting sort of star-shaped end. Uh, and it's quite uh, unique. You can't, you can't try and open this with anything else. It just simply won't work. But with the right tool for the right job, it works very well. And you can just unscrew all six of those and be very careful to lift off the bottom to leave all the parts in place. Uh, so then you can take a photo. That's what I did. And then essentially there's a motor right in the middle. And all you need to do, it has two wires is unsolder those two and then resolder them the other way around uh, and kind of rejiggle the wires so it all closes again. And that isn't as hard as you'd think uh, by the sound of things. Now, if you don't know how to solder or you don't have a soldering iron, then I suggest you just ask around uh, the <laughs> more mature gentlemen in your family and uh, connections, because somebody will, uh, and I do, and I really enjoy soldering. And I think everyone who does have a soldering iron enjoys it. So they'll relish the challenge and do you a, a solid favor, I think. So I'm also going to add a, another motor in here. So we've got two more motors, which takes our... Uh, current six and ups it to eight. Fantastic. But then I thought, well, hold on, couldn't I do this to all my other trains as well? So they've all got two motors, and then I would have 10. Oh, think of the raw power. Yes, so that's what I'm going to do with more soldering on all my trains. So they all have this double a motor setup without a polarity uh, reversal switch, which is how I did it on uh, the, the uh, Red Beast and the Yellow Hornet before. Oh, right. So I've witted far too long, I'm sure, but you've got all my plans. Uh, yeah, make this slightly better profiled with more uh, consistent grey band, which will be able to enable us to hide the worst features of this thing at the top. Add the second motor in, lots of lighting uh, and the rechargeable battery box in its new red housing. Oh, Let's get going. Well, all these changes do not amount to a tweak of the original set. I've had to take it all the way back to the base, only leaving that middle section there, really. Uh, everything's completely different. Uh, but you can see I've got the battery box in, now with the rechargeable top sitting in the top, very flush, without me pushing it down, because I trimmed those uh, little pads on the underside of the cells. And you can see I've started making this first grey horizontal section, too deep uh, and the one on the battery box which will include its lid uh, as the lower one of the two making that one too deep as well so that's really good uh, and I've got the lights wired in into this section and the wire going underneath the battery box and via the other stuff <laughs> to the battery box and the same on the other end so when I turn it on at the moment we've got some bright red lights on the back and some bright white ones on the front Excellent. So that was quite easy, though I say easy because we've got all this wire to hide in here and I've still got to add, uh, well, the IR receiver and the wires for the two motors all in there. I think the cockpit's going to be very full indeed by the end of things. But uh, yeah, these things are often origami when you want to get all this in because uh, the way I do it, I have this extra uh, wire here to a block uh, from the battery box. So when I turn on the train the lights are fully on right from the start regardless of whether I've got the motors running and then I power the uh, IR receiver which powers the motors from that block so that will have power all the time the lights will have power all the time and only the motors will be controlled by the dial of my remote so yeah that's really good cool looking good already I much prefer this double stripe so let's keep going and so the wire folding begins. Well, this is usually quite hard on a six wide train build, but with it being four wide, we've only got this cavity two wide in the middle. So I've tried to remove all the sort of cross supportive bricks where I can to give me as much space as possible. Uh, I folded a bit of the uh, lighting wire into a tiny one by two brick uh, cavity in there, uh, which means that if I did take that off, it will spring open <laughs> and fire out. And I'm going to do the same thing here with this section of wire, sort of bundle that up into all of there before putting the front back on and securing that. Uh, then in the middle, I've got wires from both sets of lights, from one and two motors, 
and from the uh, IR receiver, all to dovetail with this, uh, and then attach that to the battery box, of course. So yeah, a lot of folding to go in there <laughs> before we can put the little cabin <laughs> and seat in for the man and so on. Oh. All right, well, I better test this before I go any further. So we've got lights front and back. Yep, they're all working. So IR receiver, I want it on this one, and that should be forward, Whoa. and that should be back. Crikey, it's powerful with two motors. <laughs> well, bits everywhere, but it's starting to come back together. And you can see that uh, proper thickness gray stripe now, combining with the battery box, looking good. All the wires sort of tucked in their hole. It all did fit, hurrah. <laughs> Uh, and then we've got the switch here and I wanted to do this slightly concealed so you won't be able to see that great big button like we had before and I've just got a very simple setup here with a boat tile on the bottom and a normal tile on the top and that can just perch on there completely enclosed now because of that additional height and all I've got to do is remember where it is which bit to push to turn on and off the locomotive so there we go that's a definite improvement and then for the wire i think you'll just see that much so you see that little bit of connection but that could be something to do with the actual locomotive itself uh, and i'm going to use some of these sort of angled tiles so i can get absolutely as close as possible to the wire and yeah i don't think you're going to be able to see any of that when we're done at all ha <laughs> ha beautiful well, how about that for a slightly modified, but much, much improved red locomotive 3677. It looks great. Uh, when I bought this, I wasn't sure it was even going to be usable because of not knowing whether I could really uh, transfer the uh, battery into a rechargeable one. Uh, but then also halfway through the build with the amount of space that I had in the middle, I wasn't entirely sure all the wiring would fit as well, but it does and it works brilliantly. I think I've achieved everything I set out to. I've made this grey stripe consistent in its width throughout the entire length of the thing. I think now it looks a bit more stocky, just slightly uh, more powerful, which is a good thing really, because I've got two motors on the bottom, which gives it all that power uh, that it looks like it has. Uh, but probably most impressively, I think, is the improved view on the top. I mean, you really can't see anything other than the remnants of that connection there, I suppose. But none of the wire, due to these more modern angular tiles, and I even added this sort of pointy one on the middle to give it a bit more uh, <laughs> kind of pizzazz when it's going around the track. Uh, and then my concealed switch with the hardwired on lights is even better as well. Lovely stickers front and back. I love it. Uh, and then we've still got this round sort of fan thing on the front, whatever that is. You uh, locomotive experts can tell me. <laughs> it's probably just ventilation for the engine, isn't it? But uh, now we can attach our brand new tipper wagon, which I don't think I'm going to fill with bits and bobs because if this thing derails, it's just going to throw them all over the place. So maybe it's on its way back to wherever to pick up some contents. Uh, and then, well, it can power one of my trains uh, around woo, the <laughs> track of Brick Nottingham. So... While, oh golly, while I was doing the um, soldering for the uh, motor on the back to turn it around in its polarity, so we had two pushing uh, the same direction, I actually did the same thing for all four of my other locomotives. So now I am fully up to 10 motors on five locomotives, all double powered, all with one soldered for reversal change and one uh, conventional, of course. So now, I may not be ready for my world record today, and I've got a few more wagons coming in the coming weeks and months, uh, but I definitely think this should go around Brick Nottingham's track uh, today just to, well, show off its new clothes, basically. I absolutely love it. It's amazing what the difference one plate will make, but yeah, really nice. Do tell me what you think. New tipper wagon added to the inner loop. Very nice. But much more importantly is our new locomotive, which I did just measure for the very first time against some of the obstacles of my uh, track. Uh, and essentially it was too tall, <laughs> which means that I had to move the whistles, the steam whistles. I suppose they're still steam, are they? I don't really know. Uh, from the roof where they were uh, on there. Uh, to just in front of the cab where I don't think they blocked the guy's view because he kind of looked out of these side windows a little bit so 
yeah, that's a slight uh, change I hadn't expected. Uh, and that's because while it fit through the uh, castle tunnels fine, but it hit uh, the underside of the uh, second level of my car park, which uh, that train actually goes underneath because it's quite long. Uh, that's a really good set. I think it works perfectly between two modulars. Uh, but also it hit the inside of my train shed, which it goes through. And it would have hit, though I didn't allow it to, hit my very fragile uh, blue Gerda bridge made out of old Lego single rails. So, yeah, we'll have the whistles on the front rather than on the top. That's no biggie. Right, so let's get this going around so you can see it. And the uh, all three of them should go with the same action. There we go. Let's get a bit more welly. With all the obstacles, you can barely see the thing we just built. Oh, but there it is. Oh, yes. Looking very powerful. You can see why it hits actually now, can't you? Because it does look very big. It is quite tall compared with the other ones. But I like that. It looks really chunky and solid, which makes up for the fact that it is a bit slimmer than the others. Yes, I very much like that. Ooh, let's get an aerial view there going into the tunnel. Lovely. And um, where's the new wagon? There it was. Very nice indeed. Cool. Well, let's get some other stuff going as well. <laughs> so long. Imagine when these two are joined together and I've added even more. Wow, that is ridiculously long, isn't it? <laughs> you forget how long it is until you actually... Uh, watch it so there we go there's that one and then let's get the other cargo train going the other direction oh hold on wrong dial i'll be slowing down the other one there we go so we've got that one in all of its entirety and one day we will be linking all of this together and going for that world record yeah i think i slowed down the first one when i tried to start up the second one let's see if we can speed that back up there we go. So there is one train and we'll have the other one overlapping it in a minute. Yeah, so imagine when they're all joined together. <laughs> it's just absolutely ridiculously long. I think that will be a great, great day. Hopefully we'll be able to do that on a bigger track than the city one because, well, it is relatively limited. And arguably, I think if you join these two together as it currently stands, I think it actually might be longer than a full loop of the track. Or at least it will be. Uh, by the time I get uh, them both finished with the other plans for wagons that I've got. Well, I always like this view when you've got three things going all together. Oh, we've had a separation. We've had a separation. So I was, uh, it was suggested to me that we uh, get uh, some additional uh, rare earth magnets to actually put in between the uh, buffers of each of these because the pulling power is the thing that is uh, uh, separating all these wagons, splitting these trains, and that's the biggest problem I'm going to have making my world record train. I'm already using a one by two uh, grill pieces to join them together, as you can see. But yeah, I've really got to work on that. Uh, the other way is obviously to spread out uh, these locomotives throughout the train so uh, they don't have this problem. You can see it broke just after the cement wagon. Uh, but uh, that makes it a bit harder to control with all of the obstacles to my R signal. I could do that, uh, and I definitely would with my world record attempt, but uh, yeah, it's still good fun. Well, mission accomplished, I think. It has been a real success. Not only have we got the uh, rechargeable battery box into this thing, uh, but we've hidden all of its foibles, being the visible wire and a visible on off button we've hardwired the lights and we've added a second motor to make this incredibly future proof well 10 motors in five locomotives so yeah very future proof if only we can sort this buffer problem out <laughs> once and for all that would be ideal uh, but thanks very much for watching as always it is appreciated do remember to like comment and subscribe for more awesome lego videos and if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, it'll be Wednesday, so we'll be doing a brick haul. 
uh, and then we'll be doing more builds in the city and the cabinet next Friday. So until then, see you! Oh yeah!